back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable show. This is episode 664. Um, it's January the 29th, 2021, uh, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, stand, Pacific Standard Time. If you want to join us live, you can always turn up around 8.30 a.m. and go to the WP Tonic Facebook page and you'll be able to join the show live. Got some really great stories, I think. Got a great panel. They look, they seem awake. They seem ready. I'm going to start with Heather. Heather, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. I am Heather Renzi. I am the uh, digital solutions lead at The Difference, and uh, I am the author of Birth of a Unicorn. Uh, of the unicorn. All right, there we go. Um, I've got Sally. Sally, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Sally Getch. I am the WP fangirl and cat mom uh, and organizer of the East Bay WordPress round <coughs> WordPress meetup. Yes. And I've got my co-host on my Thursday show. I've got Stephen. Stephen, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. Stephen Center from zipfish.io, where we make WordPress blazing fast. We do. Super fast. Um, Spencer, I've got my friend Spencer. Spencer, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, Spencer Foreman from launchflows.com. And I've got a new member of the panel that's going to be semi-regular, like kind of, that's, that's the right way to put it really, is it? Um, I've got JJ with us. Like JJ, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, John Jacoby. Uh, you can follow my blog at jjj.blog, where I still actually occasionally blog like bloggers do. And uh, work at Sandhills Development on Sugar Calendar EDD3, and uh, spent a lot of time working on WordPress Core, BuddyPress, and DBPress. Right. Let's start. Uh, let's start with this one. Jetpack launches custom research project to improve plugin and reduce use of strange. That that would be about twelve years too late. Uh, so, uh, they actually, uh, I commented on um, the tavern and they wouldn't publish my remark. <laughs> once once, once you're, again, it you're was. You're blacklisted. A, uh, yes, really I, I wonder how many people's comments got censored because there, there are only three of them actually posted. Yeah. They yeah, did a well, similar thing for WooCommerce at the same time. So I think they sort of woke up one morning and said, maybe we should start these research initiatives. And it's just like across the board. We should actually do a little market research before we launch something. What, what a radical I'm gonna, idea. I'm going to throw this over to the Spencer. What did you think of this shit? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, it, now we know what you think of it. <laughs> it, it. I know because you are the objective voice of reason, clearly. Um, <laughs> the, the thing about it is that I was tempted to give him the $25 to get the $25, but the prospect of 45 minutes of discussing Jetpack was so torturous that I couldn't stomach to get the $25 off him. What I find interesting about the Jetpack research thing versus the WooCommerce, for example, the WooCommerce was maybe six, eight, 10 questions. It took five minutes. There was no offer of a $25 gift card. Now, as a marketer, I will say that the offer of a gift card is actually a fair and reasonable compensation for some people to spend a certain amount of time. I'm not sure whether it'd be worth 45 minutes, but I would say 25 bucks for 25 minutes, whatever. So you get into that whole, like, now we've established you're a whore. How much is it that it's going to cost me, you know, discussion. But as far as why they're doing it, again, we see ample evidence dripping out here and there does anybody really question that their intent is to shift the you know platform over to Jetback is the Trojan horse of Trojan horses that carries all the stuff. And then one day they essentially sort of flip the switch and say, we're a fully SaaS model. I don't think that they'll ever give up the .org because they don't control the code. That was the Achilles heel of what happened from day one. But it does seem clear that they're not pretending to do this. So like last week we talked about how Matt goes into his duplicitous mode of trying to continue to talk about, remember when we all hung out at the picnic together? And remember when J Triple J was writing the first version of BB Press and we all peace and love, peace and love. All the while, like the, the corporate banner trucks are setting up the stage with the sponsors and stuff right behind him. So this is just another example of like, we know where they're going, you know. 
fully was, commercialized. I was tempted to read out the last set, the last paragraph of it. It's the ban, the banality of evil is uh, amazing. I'm oh, sorry, uh, JJ. What did you, <laughs> what did you think of this? I mean, it's about time, right? I mean, it's uh, some official feedback mechanism. We've all unofficially been using Twitter or just kvetching out into the world, and so it is. It is the right thing to do, but like y'all said, it is it is pretty late in the game to be starting to do this. But uh, it is. Uh, do you, do you, do you least... think somebody? Do you think somebody in automatic actually got the balls to say it's not actually that good? <laughs> no, I mean. I think, well, I mean, don't forget, right? In early, early jetpack days, I, well, I if, hope, if you really want, I, I contributed, right? So it's, uh, I could, I could, I could tell you. So y'all, y'all aren't wrong so far, right? At least in my, <laughs> in my experience. So, well, but, uh, it, it, you know, if you really want world domination, pissing fewer people off is probably going to help you get there. Right. Correct. Uh, I mean, it, like the the whole plan with jetpack is always is always been, and it is. It is not a secret, right? That uh, getting everything that's on WordPress.com into Jetpack is the goal, and uh, being able to give everyone that functionality uh, is is the point. And so, uh, you know, using the the cloud power of WordPress.com in Jetpack is uh, is the point of it. And eventually, to be able to sell that as services is, uh, of course, that is the plan. Uh, it is just the it is the just, just shows you how, how, how your plans can go off the track, really. Got it. You know. Well, and it's the it's the reputation that Jetpack has earned inside the WordPress community of uh, really having its own interpretation of the rules, and uh, and that's okay because the rules are open to interpretation. But they are they're they're pushing the limits, and uh, and that someone has to again, and, and other plugins do it too. So it's not just them. Uh, but it's uh, they are they are higher profile and they've 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 gotten bitten by taking those risks and those chances uh, multiple times. Myself included, usually gets caught in the in in the tweets because I see it and I go, oh god, this again. Okay, we should we should know better. Uh, but uh, the folks that work on Jetpack are they are nice people and they are trying hard and they are they they are accepting the feedback and they are they are trying to do something that we've asked them to do. So. Is it too late? I guess, but at least they're doing it. And so, um, in conjunction with WooCommerce, makes it look a little bit less urgent. Like it does make it look like a like a company initiative of a thousand people all finally deciding to do something together instead of it being like we're listening and we're really sorry. Uh, but that's just optics, and that doesn't really matter. All that matters is I think that they're they're doing the right thing so far, and hopefully they get good feedback and something cool comes out of it, and and it changes for the better. I just love you, John. You're you're the total opposite of me. I'm such a I'm such a cynical piece of shit. And anyway, there we go. Uh, um, have uh, you got anything you want to say about this? Uh, I mean, I don't like that they're using their. I mean, they're kind of manipulating the the admin dashboard by putting that there and making people click on it. I mean, it's they have the ability to do this and override everybody else. Um, and that's the only thing I don't like about it. Um, other than that, I think it's like the opportunity is fair and the, the thing, like the what's behind it is good, but the fact that they're, they're putting it up front and center and taking away real estate from everyone else. I think that's bad. Yeah. What about you, Stephen? Got any remarks? Uh, yeah. The, so the title of the article is like Jetpack is launching this project to reduce user frustration, right? I don't think users are, frustration, are frustrated. It's the people that don't use Jetpack and have to deal with the people that do use Jetpack. Those are the frustrated people. Like as like dealing with like different clients who use a myriad of different plugins, people who want Jetpack are not frustrated by Jetpack. It's when a third party developer or an agency or somebody who's like, we'll call it say like in the know, right? Like is a deep WordPress user has to go work on a site with Jetpack. That's where the frustration happens. And so I'm not really sure how you would resolve this tension because Jetpack is not made for the developer yeah. community. Yeah. It's made for the people that want to have like a one click option to do all these great things. And that's it. But if you talk to almost anybody that spends any significant amount of time across multiple sites, 
they don't love Jetpack. They're frustrated by Jetpack. If they have to use Jetpack on somebody's site, it's a frustration to them. So the user base this is made for and the frustration that they're trying to solve, I think are kind of like, are not necessarily linked together. They're two very different people group. And so I would just be really interested to see how they try to bridge that gap and reduce that frustration. Right. Well, I've had some of the end user customers uh, say like, I saw this notice on my site that said, you know, uh, your site might not be backed up. Is, is, is that true? Because, you know, I wasn't using whatever the, can't remember the name of it, the Jetpack solution for backups. So it was complaining that, that there weren't, you know, there were backups running all the time. But so, you know, it does sometimes mislead the people, you know, who want that sort of nice, you know, who want the Swiss Army knife experience. Um, but I do think you're right, Stephen, that, that it's, you know, it's not so much the people it's aimed at that have a problem with it. It's everyone else in the community. Um, <clears throat> but those people, you know, the people who do get pissed off by it are often the ones who are deciding what gets installed on a, on a site that's being built for the people who might otherwise, you know, be perfectly happy to use Jetpack. It is interesting because I feel like the solution is to just have a native WordPress UI, like just just follow the rules and make it look and feel like WordPress, and then uh, well, yeah, would follow your own be... darn guidelines. Yeah, that that would right. really you know make life easier. Um, but the, the farther that everyone deviates from it, especially WooCommerce specifically, which just has like a whole br it's like a whole brand new thing that with extra uh, plugins added in too on top. Totally. It they is, throw it, in it, the, the, sorry to interrupt you, but like they throw no, in right. two extra plugins, three, and they also hijack the onboarding experience and they've turned it into a, a like a GoDaddy's gauntlet, you know, right. where you, go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like upsell, upsell, upsell. It's like, I just wanted yeah. to set up my shop, man. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it, it just, it's uh, like to, to Steve's point is like user tolerance is really high. And I think it's easy for us to forget just how tolerant that most, most WordPress users are that like, well, I'll just click past that. I don't, I know what it is. It's not for me. I just completely ignore it. And they will, right. If you have, if you use eye tracking software to watch a use, they'll, they'll ignore the notices and they will skip right past it and it won't even bother them. But for us, it's just like, Oh, get that out of there. I can't stand it. And you see that a thousand times and, to us, we're just like, oh, maybe, man. maybe um, developers are a little more OCD than other people. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> I, I really just like clutter in the like, get that out of there. Yeah, uh, I am like that. I, yeah, I think you're right there, Sandy. I know yeah. I shouldn't do it, but I just, I just don't like class. There, there, there is a thing too, just to get geeky for a second, but John can speak to this as well. But so when you have admin notices about your plugin, whether it be for upsells or things that have to be added in, you as a developer have a thoughtful capability within your fingertips to put a unique class or ID on your notice. So for example, somebody can, like Tom, I think McFarland's got a plugin. Somebody can selectively just disable your notices because you're driving me out of my mind, man. Right, There's right. certain developers who are just douchebags and they specifically make these things dynamically generated. And then you've got this whole battle of like the plugin area or the top of the dashboard becomes a anything goes billboard with spray painting graffiti on it. And I think that's well, the part the Well, every developer seems to, to be imagining that their notice is the only notice that would be up. I think they're doing it on purpose. And I think Jetpack is doing that on purpose as well. Although you can remove the Jetpack plugin if you choose, it's like Fight Club. If you choose to use Jetpack Club, you don't talk about Jetpack Club because it infests, you know, it infests everything <laughs> else, and then you start to see the weirdness appear, which is why you know I've always been anti-Jetpack for a number of reasons. But when a client has Jetpack, I immediately go, "Let's get this bad boy out of there. Let's get rid of the other plugins because it does seem rather hip hypocritical and unfair mm -hmm. to do as we say, not as we do." But that's exactly what's going on. Right. I'm yeah. I'm very pro the power of Jetpack, like the concept of Jetpack and offloading all those things makes a complete sense to me that like, I, I may not want to bother my own web server with processing a bunch of images uh, and just sit there and chug through uh, like a thousand images that have to be resized, just offload that to Photon, let Jetpack pictures, photos, whatever it's called, now do it, let the cloud do it and then give me it back and be fine. Backup, stuff like that, it makes total sense. Um, but I, it's the, it's the non-native feeling, which is maybe my OCD coming into play where like, if I, if it is an iOS app or a Mac OS app or something, 
you can tell when it's not right. It might work okay, but you can tell when it's not right and it doesn't work right. And so you, it, it instantly make, it lowers my confidence that they have not used the, 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 the built in functionality that is provided to them in Swift UI or in whatever else where like, they've just invented a whole new set of user experiences that you, that are, that they've thrown the old stuff off the window that we know is native and works. And like designers want to design, right? And I, and I get that too, because develop coders want to code. We all want to see our vision through. Uh, but it, 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 when it, when stuff like Jetpack or WooCommerce deviates so far away from the native experience, uh, especially with like notifications and notices and those kind of things that like, it is it, like, mm. there, you spend a lot of time developing and designing things that don't need it. And then you spend no time designing and developing the things that do like the notices and stuff, like find a better solution for that. But like, you don't need to reinvent drop downs and buttons and inputs because WordPress has stuff for that. Like it just, it's, it's frustrating to see all this effort going into uh, the fun stuff and not a lot of effort going into the hard stuff. No, oh, well, big guy. Well, well I, like... I, that might be the story of the planet, right? People right. want to put their effort in the fun <laughs> stuff we, uh, and not in the hard true. stuff. And then, we, well, you know, we, we, we see we, just how bad true. our infrastructure is. Yeah, we, we is need to move. We need to move on to the next story. The only thing is the tavern obviously do not appreciate my English humour. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's the story too. Well, well, you know, some, somebody did get through a comment about, you know, the leadership is against hearing reality. Yeah, I just don't appreciate, they don't, don't appreciate my humour. There we go. There we are. Uh, I'm barred for life, obviously, but I'll still try. I have to get a pseudium when I, and you know, do it under the counter, won't I? Uh, um, so on to story two, and I, I, I think we've got to change story two to what's happened with Robin Hood. Um, Spencer, do you want to give a brief outline to the audience about the Robin Hood story? I mean, in a nutshell, there were a few online trading sites that were designed for newbies and for younger people and, you know, better interfaces. And one of them was Robin Hood. Um, and they have their own regulations. But essentially what happened was the there were a couple stocks out there. One was GameStop, which was a a, a brick and mortar store where you could trade or buy all kinds of uh, games for your Nintendo and your Wii and blah, 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 blah. And you could, you know, take in old DVDs and trade them for new ones and so on and so forth. Uh, the company was kind of like in the range of Blockbuster, which was, it was heading for the exit. Uh, there was also AMC theaters, which everybody, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was in a movie theater, but it was a long time ago and they're pretty well still close. So what happened was the, hedge fund big boys big girls the the ones that control billions of most dollars, of them are boys the, the big <laughs> big folks decided that they were going to do uh if you ever saw the movie trading places with uh eddie murphy they were going to do essentially a, a run those two stocks out of town by shorting them betting that the stock was going to go down apparently some clever young folks on reddit picked up news that with, with these really interesting internet handles right that there's a thing called a strike date so kind of like the duke brothers if you're betting that frozen orange juice contracts are going down you essentially are buying the right to acquire those stocks from people who own them but there's a premise that says first of all there's a date that this has to happen on that you have to actually buy the stocks and there's a thing called a, a spread where you can only have a difference between the actual price of the stock and your right to buy it price of so much before you have to cover the difference. And so this clever person on Reddit picked up on the fact that these industrial level hedge fund managers were really trying to run these two stocks out of town and went on Reddit and told all the, the rest of the, the, the our gang members, Spanky and, and Alfalfa, hey, don't sell your stocks under any circumstances. In fact, buy more of this exactly like in the movie Trading Places. And they ran the stock up like three, 400%. I think it went like crazy from a hundred something to like 400. As a result, it caused a lot of pain for the hedge fund man. Oh, these, you know, they had already bought their second yacht, you know, <laughs> you know, you know it's <laughs> rough in it, isn't it? You know, you know. But, but this is, this is, this is where they're foisted by their own petard to use a, you Hoisted, know, darling, hoisted. They, they had to follow the rules of the 
trading, like just in the, the movie, and they had to cover the spread. And so the industrial managers had to put millions and billions of dollars to cover their spread while it's going on. Here's where it gets weird. Somehow somebody picked up the phone and put the squeeze on Robin Hood and said, hey, wouldn't it be a shame because you're putting a lot of pressure on us if we had to like do some stuff to shut you down. And somebody got cold feet at Robin Hood and halted trading of that particular GameStop stock, which is sort of unheard of historically. Like, you can write this. You, you can write. You, you can write. delist trading of a stock. And then what happened, which is the irony of it, then all the whining and the crying on Wall Street and all the, the news shows and everything came out. Oh, boo-hoo for the hedge funds because it was unfair that people did this thing to them that was so naughty. When anybody who lived through 2006 through eight and they're on, I mean, we all got our rear ends handed to us for various reasons. So the irony is flowing, but that's the story. If I missed anything, forgive me. But I, I just thought you did a fantastic. Heather, well, well, well done. What, what do what do you <laughs> reckon? You know, you, do you think we need to contribute a charity comp for these hedge fund managers? You know, I know it's a tough life. You know, when you already put your deposit down for your next yacht, and you get these terrible Robin Hood people fucking up all your plans it's just it's just just not on is it ever well i mean honestly I, I was talking about this with my husband yesterday and i was trying to explain it in a different kind of way and so we had we had one kind of insurrection earlier this year already and and now it's another one um only this one's kind of being led by elon musk like he started out saying uh that that short sellers are evil and and he, he was like yeah sh like you should uh the, the worst people on the planet are the people that are shorting tesla and they're betting against him and they kind of like if, if you go into these reddit groups and the discords um and all that you see that they're basically taking they they took what he was saying and then they started uh mobilizing against all of these these hedge funds that they make their money on shorts and so i mean it's not it's not that they're going after GameStop and AMC and, and Bed Bath and & Beyond and BlackBerry because of nostalgia. They're going after them because these are the most heavily shorted stocks out there. And um, so they got the, the marching orders from this man that they idolized and, um, and now they're, they're targeting them to, to take down. I mean, it's, it's another revolution. It's like the French revolution. Well, what do you, what's your reaction with the way, but I do, and, and I thought, thanks for that insight, actually, Heather, you gave a different dimension to it. I really appreciate that input ever, but what do you, what's your response to the way Robin Hood dealt with this? You know, that, what did you, what do you well, think of that? So, I mean, I think that, uh, it was obvious if you saw the interview with the Robin Hood CEO um, by uh, Chris Cuomo, uh, like he, the facial expressions that he had, the micro expressions that he was using, it was quite obvious that um, he knew what he was doing and that like it, it's because they're heavily leveraged by the investors that are in these hedge funds. So like Robin Hood's major investors are the people that are being affected by these shorts so like i mean no matter what he says like they they <laughs> they are doing this on purpose they they are cutting off the the people because um they're being told to right and basically the fine for doing the, the the wrong thing would be exponentially less money yeah. than losing yeah. the money legitimately through the market yeah so they just took they just took the hit fine we'll just we'll just we know we're gonna get hit by it but it will cost us 99 billion less dollars to get yeah fined, so. and and it was like it was obvious like chris cuomo like was like so there's no sec regulation against this and he's like yes but the regulation and he's like yeah so what is the regulation quote me the regulation and he's like yeah but the regulations are, and he's like there's no regulation there's no regulation against this and it's the same argument that we're seeing with the QAnon people like when you go against the, it's like oh yeah but the regulation yes yeah, show us the show us any science at all okay. so <laughs> but, the, um, i saw a tweet you have like to the, do that i was feeling okay it's like when i see a picture of uh, the great leader 
when when bloody Spencer, I'll oh, do it, Spencer. Put your back, this change is, the back, oh, man, change no, the back this, to a great this, leader. Uh, 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 mad, my, mad, visit, mad visits like the ghost of Christmas past. You can't conjure him up. He comes when he comes. But this is this is every a time you do that to me, my blood supply starts to this, get hot. You know, this this thing with the with Chris Como's conversation. So this is really like. I've used this before. In law school, we learned about the Ford Pinto case, where Ford made a conscientious mathematical decision to allow people to die a horrible, fiery crash when the rear end of a Ford Pinto was like, dink. <laughs> okay, so they decided less cost to pay out the, the, the survivors. And, and this is what's ironic. I read this morning that they took a billion dollars of investment money, but the fact is there certainly needs to be a conversation about whether these venture-funded new investment trading platforms where people are locked into have to be transparent about who their investors are or something because it does seem a rather ironic double standard that the people who are investors can have their particular investments it's really i've got a couple of friends that are no, well, i've got a couple of friends that are really invested big into robin hood i mean literally that I, I i think it's become a total addiction <laughs> and they've got a couple hundred thousand each and they keep saying this shit keeps going up. Oh, they just totally lost it. Honestly, if they've got a hundred thousand dollars each in Robin Hood, they should consider going to Vanguard or something like that. They should like because now they're gambling. Individuals are protected through the FDIC up to five hundred thousand. But that's if you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of swings, I agree. And like and you if but people if you're gonna double down on something and your five hundred thousand becomes a million, you're instantly SOL if, if Robin Hood just decides to close their doors, right? And that so. and that's the point of things like that though. Like, I mean, Robin Hood is meant for non-accredited investors. They're not giving you advice, they're not explaining what you do. They don't even tell people about wash sales and capital gains, and they're not they're not educating you on this stuff. So like all these people, like all these kids that are like making all this money or think they're making money, they're forgetting like the short-term capital gains hit that they're going to get. So like, I mean, yes, you may have made uh, like $3,200, like the kid that sold his GameStop shock, stock, yeah, GameStop stock yesterday. But I mean, he really only made 1500 because it was a short-term gain. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's all, all this stuff that you need to know that they don't know because they're unsophisticated investors. In, they in don't right match, uh, the, match the most fascinating all, part. Does the stock's going up? That's all that matters. Ever. The most fascinating part about up. all of it is that, is that like the, the, like the, the back and forth that like they shut down the wall street vets subreddit. And because they're someone, right, at some point, had there were a million bots that were signing up for Reddit that were going into the Wall Street Bet subreddit, posing as actual, like, members of that Reddit or whatever, to, like, discredit the conversation that all of these, you know, people were having, where, like, if you were paying attention to it, you really, because everyone's moving so fast, and the stock, the change is, is, is so dramatic, that everyone's a little bit panicked. And so they were really counter terrorizing one another where they just closed down, like the, the mods just closed down the subreddit. Like we're, we can't control the influx of uh, like misinformation that's happening here. So like they're what, what's revealing to me about all of it is that not just Robin hood, but like Citadel or whoever else, like the big players that are like, there's a playbook for, for handling what happens when they start hemorrhaging ten billion dollars? Like they just go, okay, well, we'll 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 loan some more money. That didn't work. Okay, we'll try this next thing. Well, that didn't work. Now we'll just attack them. Like we'll just go into their house and we will attack them. And like, okay, well, that didn't work. And so now, in the, in the final hour, we'll just shut down trading. We just won't let them trade. We'll trade ourselves. We'll take the hit. Like there's there's an actual playbook for this to the point where like the Robinhood app had ui to like they have the ability to, sh to to disable the button with a notice that says you can't trade this stock right now like yeah. the app has to have that functionality in it in order for them to disable it remotely on that one particular stock because if you try and buy something after hours through robin hood it just cues it and it says thanks for your money we'll, we'll worry about it later so there has to be functionality preemptively shipped into an ios app that says we can just, it's, it's, it's we can just close like it down it's a bit so like, like the, this, 
It's a bit like the it's tavern. Just... With, it's a bit like the tavern oh, yeah. with my comments. They got yeah. just a, they just got a button. You're right, just... You're right John. The an economic <laughs> crisis of value to billions of dollars is exactly like your comment being in moderation. That <laughs> came for that English geezer. Cool. He ain't getting a comment on the tavern. <laughs> All right, there well, you go. Well, I mean, this morning Coinbase is doing the same thing. They're not allowing uh, you to buy uh, dollars or euros um, because they don't want you to buy more Bitcoin or Ether. Um, so if you don't already have money in in, in uh, Coinbase, um, you can't buy up Bitcoin because it's it's on a run. Both of those are on a run today. Don't get me started on Coinbase. Those guys screwed me when Bitcoin split. My money just disappeared. It was oh. gone. It, it just went to the wrong address and they completely ghosted me. Oh, no. Coinbase sucks. But anyway, I Done think it's that. time for a break, right, Donovan? Yeah. it's time for a break for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, we'll go for our break. We'll be back in a few moments. We're coming back. I've got a different level of panelists on the show now. They're talking about their investments and their cryptocurrency. Their, uh, um, uh, just uh, got a different level of panelists we are getting to this show now. Um, before we go into another story, I want to talk about we're doing me and Spencer doing another webinar. We're doing it on the 12th of February. Friday the 12th of February at 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, just about an um, hour after this particular show. And it's all going to be about uh, automation. Um, it's going to be about launch flows. It's going to be about fluent CRM. It's going to be about how you build modern day landing pages we're going to be covering a load of stuff. If that's interesting, go to the WP Tonic website. There's a button in the top navigation. It says webinar. You, you click it and you can sign up for our live webinar. And then you will have the opportunity to ask Spencer any question you want about marketing optimization. What more could you ask for? That's what I think. Uh, um, on to the next story. Um, Oh God! Plugging, plugging team uh, draws a line. Oh yeah, plugging must not change WordPress default automatic update settings. I just love these titles from the tavern. They're getting longer and longer, aren't they? So well, they're, JJ, they're clear and descriptive, which is good for SEO. It, you know, it's not it's clever or entertaining, but. <laughs> like this show really isn't it? but there we go uh um, jj what i think that there are plugins that are designed to disable auto updates right so what happens to those i think they just get grandfathered in well no uh, it says it says clearly if if the yeah. point of the plugin is to manage updates right. you can use exactly. it to manage updates but you cannot right. have your you know you cannot have your plugin mess with the default uh, 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 set up, you know, uh, automatically without you making a choice to say turn them on. Which right now they're not automatically on. I think it's a good. I think it's probably fine, but it is a slippery slope, right? Like, they're they're plugins, and and it, it's an it 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 is an inevitable slippery slope. I should say, right? Like, if you ask anyone who's into software security at all, that the reason that they probably don't like WordPress is literally because everything runs in the global scope and it is a software security nightmare. Like nothing is sandboxed. Everything is just running right along the core operating system. The, the application is just one big monolithic thing. And in a world where uh, Windows and Mac OS and your phone and everything wants to prompt you for access to a microphone and a camera and your keyboard and logging your keystrokes and everything, WordPress has zero of that. It log Everything is everything. Nothing is nothing. It's all running together. And so once we start just as a community deciding that like, well, everything but that's okay. Uh, that that starts a, a cycle that we've now, we're now in where everything but auto updates is now okay. There will be something else that we cannot do that if somebody's gonna say this, this is the next thing, you can't do that either and you can't do that either. And I think that's like natu the natural human progression. Of sounds like, it sounds like Robbie Dude, doesn't it? <laughs> a little bit, right? It sounds like your WP Comment Tavern to me, actually. it's uh, Eventually, they just start moderating you and you never show up. But uh, So it's fine. This, this, it, 
and the sentiment is 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 good and they're they're really trying to protect end users it is all for good reasons uh, and because there are plugins there were plugins there were ag examples of plugins that were either, either overriding it and uh turning it on when it was off or turning it off when it was on and so like if a user decides to enable plugin updates and the user and the plugin just disables them uh it it's sort of user hostile and the same same with the plugin that just turns auto updates on because then it breaks stuff and so like uh it's just not a good it's not good for users so that makes a lot of sense but uh, but it is the beginning of that slope. We haven't we haven't really had hard limits on things that you you're not supposed to touch, and so now we do. So, what do you reckon about this one, Sally? Um, I mean, I looked at it, and I would uh, I was, you know, interested to notice the 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 uh, you know the case they cite is one that turned the auto updates on, where where the plugin turned the auto updates on versus off, because there's been such discussion about auto updates and having them at all and people's various um, uh, uh, objections uh, to that. And so, you know, it does make a kind of sense that if you want the auto update system to work, there's a way in which it has to be able to work. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, there is a whole kind of question of, you know, who gets to, to decide what about what. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and then <clears throat> referring back to our, our previous discussion, to what degree is Jetpack going to ignore that? Um, <laughs> I think um, it's one of those things where, um, like, the idea behind it, I like, like, I don't think a plugin should mess with my default auto update settings. Like, to me, that runs me the wrong way. But um, kind of like um, you were saying, like, the fact that they're putting this restraint like is kind of crossing this line that really hasn't been crossed before. And what does that mean for other situations? And what about if there is an actually good reason to change that? Like, I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but like maybe there's a reason why a plugin has to be able to manage that for somebody or change something to change that setting or another setting for somebody. Um, and it just crosses that line into like, what what next? What what's the next feature that my plugin can't edit or change? Right. Except, I mean, I'm thinking about stuff like, uh, you know, if I install a second plugin that does certain types of, you know, caching or optimization, usually that plugin will say, "Hey, you've already got such and such doing this. Can we turn that off and use ours?" Yeah, mm -hmm. but it asks. It asks. And so it doesn't seem like there, you know, there, there's some, a reason why it couldn't prompt you in that way. Yeah. So it's interesting because the, the caching plugins, they're, this is, in, inside of WordPress, there are, there are drop-ins. There are plugins that are unique and weird that do weird things, right? And so you can detect the presence of a drop-in because the file is there. Everyone hates drop-ins, but I love them because they're, because you have that kind of ability. Whereas things like hooks, you can't, you can kind of look around, but you'd really have to write a specialized hook to look for all of your comp your competitors, your competition, to see if someone else is hooking into this, some specific thing, which I will argue we should be doing, frankly. Like like one of the things that we're going to build in the sugar calendar is I want to be able to tell if you're running uh, Event Calendar Pro or uh, Event Modern Calendar or anything. Like if you are, if, there's no reason to run two event plugins. And if you are, we're going to screw some stuff up because we have collisions with post types and things that are named the same. And so like we should be uh, protecting our users from damaging their data or their sites or those kind of things. And like it's, e it's easier for caching plugins or like database plugins that do database drop and stuff. But for other plugins, there isn't this sort of central registry where you could say, hey, I'm a I'm a I registered this 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 thing and so don't don't mess with me uh there are for some but not not for everything else and so you really have to do it ad hoc and piecemeal it all together uh which is like one of the one of the good things about wordpress is you you get to do it you can do whatever you want baby right it's all it's all open yes yeah, the good uh, thing and the bad thing it, but but you have to do it all yeah. all right i'm gonna i'm gonna go to what was gonna be our former story too um 
So I'm going to cut this off and go to what was story two. I wasted 40,000K on a fantastic startup idea. We've all been there, mate. We've all been there. What did you reckon about that one, Heather? Not me. I've never had $40,000 to invest in anything. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, no. This this uh, so this article is about a person that uh, started a startup idea and uh, like quit their job, went whole hog into developing it, and then went to try and find a customer. And uh, this is the exact. And it was in the medical person. field. It's notorious, yeah. isn't it? It's notorious yeah. as a graveyard of startups, isn't it? Anything to do with bloody lawyers and doctors, you know. This is the exact opposite of every um, thing that I ever recommend. Um, I mean, I always tell people don't develop a thing until you have somebody to pay you to develop it. Um, I mean, I come from the the consultancy background, but still, I mean, if if you tell somebody, like if you tell a doctor uh, to to do surgery before you've invoiced somebody for it, <laughs> they're never going to do it. They're not. They're always going to check uh, to see if you have insurance to cover it first. Um, so, like, why would you ever uh, hire developers and and uh, like start working on something just based off of an idea? No, first you go out, you do market research you get somebody to say like, I will pay you this amount of money for the thing um, before you ever spend money of your own. And certainly before you would quit your job. Yes. What do you reckon, Spencer? What do you reckon of this one? I mean, you know, you guys have covered pretty well, but it's the, the number one thing that you always need to do with a business is find the pain. But right after that is see who will pay for you to solve that pain because there's a lot of, a lot of pain people apparently are very happy to live with and even a great idea a clever idea is maybe a punchline in a joke but it's not necessarily a business there's a lot of factors involved um I, i'm finding you know i'm in my nostalgia stage you know i'm, I'm uh -huh. 72 years old this year yeah that yeah last year took it out of you a eh, spent um <laughs> um but i'm in my nostalgia stage where uh, like I love all things 90, right? 90s, because I'm a Gen Xer. And so my kids are at the age where they're discovering the stuff in the 90s. But what that gives me is this sort of unique perspective where- And, and, and doesn't it give you a weird feeling to realize that the music you listen to as a teenager is now on all the oldie stations? No, but, but ironically, oh, just to totally- the, the stuff that was shunned by my kids' generation a couple years ago is now the cool stuff like the Nirvana or you know Pearl Jam early '90s you know MTV early. Anyway. Eight Bush has come back. Bless her little heart. Like, like I'm so cool now. Whatever. <laughs> like, and I love that my kid, my 17 year old. Yeah, but it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same as Elgar, is it? You know, this is... what, what's so cool is I work out with my 17 year old, and his playlist magically is like would have been my playlist. I mean, I'm like, he totally did it on his own. Okay, so to the point, being a little nostalgic. That is adorable. And having the, uh, I love it. You know, I finally, I waited long enough, it happened. Um, if you have the benefit of hindsight of experience plus foresight, you can start to see the cyclical stories repeating themselves. And whether it's in romance or whether it's in your, your family life or whether it's in finance, the point is always that you have the benefit of like, God damn it, I wish I knew what I know now back then because this guy's young and energetic. I was this guy. I flushed tens of thousands of dollars down the toilet on things in my 20s and 30s as well. As a you know, person who's beyond that, I wouldn't ever do it again because now I understand, oh, I read this book before. <laughs> and so now I'm going to start with the final chapter, work my way backwards. And it gives us a certain advantage if you have that ability to see it. But he was a well-written, he, he wrote a well-crafted little tome here and uh, it was fun to read, but he's not really saying anything more than what I think well, all of us really to need be to be fair, this to be fairness the medical industry is going to be dis used there this horrible terminology it is going to be disrupted scott Gallagher, dr scott Gallagher, is right sure, he's a sure. prime but 
not for the small people. You know, it's notorious the medical industry for it's a great to say it's the graveyard of startups. Is right. I mean, um, I've I've it's notorious. I, I've seen cross various you know medical related uh, startups you know kind of cross you know out of the corner of of my eye and and you figure some of them will will get somewhere de- depending on how they're set up. But that yeah, I mean, of course. It's chancy enough to create a startup when you've done a little bit of research and determined there, that there's at least some market for it because, you know, there could still be a competitor who, you know, gets I'm ahead. Great, of I'm a great way. believer in look at look at the, look at something that's got some competition that, that really, and then just do something that's a little bit better, you know. Uh, um, you know, it's not the unic you know, the unicorn whisperer won't be you know, won't be interested in that, but as it can still be a nice little order, you know, there's nothing bad. Well, as, yes, you know. I mean I think there is too much like pursuit of the big blockbuster kind kind of thing. I just saw an article yeah. uh, uh it was a the article these, I think was these, from these, last these year. These but... and their Robin Hood accounts, you know, and their vanguard and right, and but all it's this, you know. Yeah, so. You know, it's like in publishing that if somebody comes up with an idea and like nobody has ever written about this before, that's kind of a warning sign. It's like, yeah, maybe nobody's interested in it or, you know, <laughs> I do have do you have to maybe the reason nobody invented this is that nobody wants it. Um, and in this case, it seemed like people did want it. Uh, so he got that far. But you know, not enough to pay for it, and and yeah, that is as a big, as, as soon big as I bump. heard it, as soon as I heard he was aiming it at the medical and doctors. Oh my God, fathers! You know, it's a well. It sounds way. like he was first thinking about consumers, and then realized you know consumers don't want to pay for stuff because you know we're used to just giving away all our data instead. Well, yes, in the medical it's... industry and all everything that they use for tools to to medicine is all they're they're so aggressive so hyper uh, their relationships are super deep right and they're they're used to being sold and like having having a rep come and talk to them every month to try and, and give like, them goodies and right so checks like, you know opium so if, you know, if you're not willing or able and, to 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 play it's so that di- part of the game JJ, then- it's so it's so different to the national health service you you get no reps coming around there's no there's no money in the service at all uh, there we it go. sounds amazing That's it was awesome. amazing i miss yeah. it you yeah. do good old the good old national health service this socialist nurse and it's terrible stuff isn't it sandy i was terrified to return to america and leave the national health system I had a pre-existing chronic condition. It cost me like less than a hundred quid a year for all my meds. Uh, and uh, it, going back to America in the late nineties and having no idea whether I would get any kind of coverage at all was really freaking scary. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, the, the, the technology lagged a little here and there, but in, in terms of being able to get care when I needed care, um and you know and the jaw dropping things like the fact that they make house calls um and therefore you must you must get a doctor who lives close enough to you to make house calls and i'm like looking at the person telling me this is like wait what planet have i just landed on here we go all right i think we have to cut the other two stories out because i don't meet my panel and myself got better things to do but so let's go on to our recommendations of the week mine is a um, booking um, calendar system booking system it's called booking wp i've been having a look at it recently it was quite good so go over to booking wp.com and have a look at what they've got to offer so Let's start with JJ. Have you you got any kind of recommendation, anything that's come on your radar recently that you want to give light to, my beloved JJ? Uh, I don't. I've spent all week looking at this GameStop stuff. I don't know that I've got anything (laughs) more useful. I will say, though, no, uh, I guess I guess I I will give a a small I mean, it's I'm 
I'm not saying anything that, that anybody doesn't already know, but uh, advanced custom fields is pretty awesome. <laughs> Yes, it remains. Do whatever you like, JJ, on this. That's all I'm saying. In reason, Uh, um, pretty great. Spencer, have you got anything you want to enlighten the audience about? Um, I don't know if we talk about this, but there's a guy who wrote an article here, Scott Spence. I'll paste it in the chat. But basically, he made a list of uh, of uh, the services, the SaaS services that allowed him to take notes. One of the things that I'm challenged with <laughs> is I am old school, right? I got like, I, I write in my computer here, but I also do stuff online. And unlike my uh, partner, Luke, who is extremely organized, I'm constantly bouncing around with where to store my stuff. I mean, I inevitably default to writing out a note and then emailing me a message. Well, I do know a program. It's called Evernote. You know, there's somebody on this panel who had something to, <laughs> had something to bloody do with it, mate. So uh, but, maybe you should but, look at that. It, it's always the same game because it depends on what device you're on. And then you got like multiple Google logins for different companies. And then I'm on my mobile and I got an idea. So I always seem to default back to like emailing me something. This list of stuff was interesting because it goes through a number of different tools that are including these sort of desktop corrals where you can set up like predefined groups of different plugins for different situations. And um, I still don't have my answer. I still email my stuff almost everything because I know it'll never go away, but it's, it's kind of on par with inbox zero, which I will say I've probably been, been inbox zero for 10 years or more. And that is just a methodology, but this is something I'm still open to other people's suggestion to figure out. So I'll paste it here. It's uh, okay. I let, I let the calls. I let the calls whisper deal with you. Uh, um, so, um, Stephen, Stephen, uh, yeah, my recommendation is a game. It's called <coughs> Unitama. Um, it is kind of like chess, but it's a beautifully crafted game in gameplay and in design. And those two things rarely come hand in hand. Um, and it's got a really cool martial arts kind of flow and feel to it. So, if you're looking for a cool two player game, and you like chess, but it's hard to find other people to play chess with you, then ch- check out this game. It's called Katana? What? Onitama? Yeah, I'll, I'll post a link to Amazon. Yeah, oh, put, it into, put, put it in the chat. And I've, I've got my concerns now about Steve, you now, my young Stephen. <laughs> That's an instant click you, for you, me. You got too um, much, if you got time to play on, online games, uh, uh, um, it's, it's not online. It's a physical. We need to have a game. discussion, Stephen. You know, <laughs> uh, um, right, um, Sally. Uh, got anything you want to recommend? Uh, yes, I think that possibly this has been mentioned on this show before. Um, but it, it happens to be relevant to me now because I'm, I'm looking at a, a couple of, of new site builds for people. And uh, it's called Accessible Brand Colors. Uh, and what it does is let you, um, uh, you know, take the colors in the color palette you're thinking of and you put them in and it checks them for uh, a bunch of different uh, accessibility issues. So... Uh, you know, contrast, um, color blindness, uh, et cetera, because, you know, where you might have something where, all right, you've got the like black and white contrast, but you may have an issue with how distinguishable those are if you can't see the, the different colors. And it, it is uh, good to be able to just like sort of, you know, tune this up in advance instead of later realizing, oh, heck, there's a big problem with our, you know, with our brand color spectrum. Uh, yeah, the professionalism you get with Sandy. You know, I'm just used to whacking up a theme, you know. There we go. Uh, um, so, um, have, I, have you got any? <laughs> have yeah, m- mine's not a plug-in. Mine's a, like, I'm, I'm really excited because uh, we, we just uh, put down money for a Tesla. So, uh, yeah, we finally did it. And um, so I've got a link to uh, anyone else out there that's on the fence and wants to get a Tesla, like uh, you can use uh, our referral code and get uh, a thousand miles of free supercharging. Um, so, uh, or if you want Tesla solar panels, uh, you get $400 in Tesla credits and then uh, you start referring other people and it becomes mm. this big pyramid. Which, which, which Tesla are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're getting the Model S, which actually they just released uh, the new uh, feature refresh for it. So, um, 
Yeah, we we put it down. With the pilot steering wheel. Yeah, with the pilot yeah. steering wheel. Oh, so uh, with full full self driving, and Vegas has the cool. Uh, it's full autonomous streets already here. So as soon as they're allowing actual autonomous in Vegas, we'll be one of the first cities. So yeah. I don't know what to say to you, Heather. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm, really, strange, I really I'm strange to hear say, echoes yeah. of that, that startup article about, you know, with all the hipster references. I mean, he he is an entertaining writer, that that guy. He might not have been very smart about his decision with business. The day I buy a Thomas car will be the day I put a bullet in my head. Uh, um, you don't so, want your robots wow. to, like, take over your... I, I mean, I have a pool robot. I don't know. I have, I, 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 there are cars of a, cars that will be well part I want a machine that like, I bloody yeah, I control. That. <laughs> I want a machine that I control. This car the, parks uh, for you. Yes. Has anybody seen John Drive? Do we know if <laughs> if we should get him a Tesla? Well, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's got a private here. driver. He, he's been here long enough to to uh, get used to which side of the road you're on, at least. Um, Usually it does go. It's just, if I'm really stressed out, I, it, I, I still do sometimes occasionally end up on the wrong side, actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, only, only, very, way, only very occasionally that's too much knowledge for my beloved listeners and viewers it's been a great show we'll be back next next week in a in a flash actually in like a second we will be back into your consciousness oh dear there we go uh, um, we'll see you soon listeners and viewers bye 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 y'all